Bwana asifiwe. Bwana asifiwe tena kanisa. Asubuhi ya leo ni asubuhi njema ambao Bwana ameifanya na hivyo basi kama kanisa la Cornerstone tungependa mara tena kukualika ukapate kujumuika pamoja nasi katika ibada ya siku ya leo. Hivyo pale popote ulipo ukiwa uko sebuleni, uko pale kitandani mwako, unapotutizama tunakukaribisha ujumuike pamoja nasi tunapoenda kumwabudu asubuhi ya siku ya leo. Inua tu mikono yako Hallelujah. na ukamzungumzie Bwana mwambie asubuhi ya leo tunamshukuru tunamu mimi tunamuinua maana hakuna Mungu mwingine aliye kama yeye anastahili sifa anastahili utukufu wote anastahili heshima zote yeye ni Mungu mkuu yeye ni Mungu asiyeshindwa yeye ni Mungu asiyepungukiwa yeye ni Mungu mwaminifu asubuhi ya siku ya leo yeye ni Mungu anayetupenda yeye ni Mungu ambaye anatujali haleluya haleluya hakuna wakufana na bwana hakuna wakufana na naye oh hakuna wakufana na na bwana hakuna wakufana na naye oh hakuna wakutoshanishwa naye hakuna wakufana na naye oh hakuna wakulinganishwa naye hakuna wakufana na naye Tunaimwa sauti 
time. Let us put our hands together and welcome our Father and our Bishop, Bishop Joseph Tua. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 
Welcome again to this service, and the Lord bless you. We are continuing with our study and sharing about anointing of a thousand times. And we are motivated from the scripture in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 11, where Moses was speaking to the children of Israel, and he said, May the Lord God of your fathers increase you a thousand times and bless you as he has promised. God had a promise to be with the children of Israel, to take care of them, to protect them, to fight for them, to enable them, to enable them. So we are talking about anointing. What is anointing? Why do we need anointing and the effects of anointing? In the last study, we were looking at the definition, a simple definition of anointing. And we realized that when you talk about anointing, we are talking about a divine enablement. That God was going to, or he plans, and was going to enable the children of Israel to be able to do what he had planned and a purpose for them in their lives. Today we are looking at, again, in the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 1 to 4, and we are asking ourselves, why do we need anointing? And before we read the scripture here, we, it is good that also we do a, a, just a, a recap of a half a minute here. In the previous study, we learned that anointing is empowerment. It is God who empowers you to rise up into the area of your calling or to receive a miracle. He enables you. He blesses. He is a blessing. And in the blessing, God enlarges. He blessed the children of Israel by enlarging. He enlarged Abraham by giving him Isaac, by making him a big nation. He also enlarged Abraham by uh, th through Jesus that Christ that salvation was going to come, whereby you and I today rejoiced in this big blessing. Now this time when Moses is speaking, it is almost a thousand years since the Lord spoke to, to Abraham. Because in the life of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all the way by the time they went to Egypt, it's about 400 years. And then they stayed in Egypt for 400 years, those are 800 years. And then Moses has taken the children of Israel and he has struggled with them for another 40 or, or thereabout years. So about 900 years, um, the Lord is speaking again to this man, to this man, uh, Moses, concerning his plan that he will give you anointing of a thousand, year, uh, thousand times and more. Why the anointing? The man, Joshua, all the time that he was there, the life that Joshua knew was a life of walking under Moses. He walked under Moses. He lived under Moses. And he found himself in a place of a comfort, in the sense that he knew it is the Lord who speaks to Moses, and then Moses speaks to me. It is the Lord who instructs Moses, and then Moses can instruct me. And therefore, he was in that kind of situation. He knew in his mind how difficult, how tough the task was of dealing with the children of Israel. It was a very tough job. And in any case here, he did not expect that Moses would die so quickly, even without giving him an instruction and talking to him further, preparing him how. And even he never thought that he would be the next man who will be able to take over the leadership from Moses and to go out. And therefore, when we talk about why of the anointing, is that God must speak to Joshua. God must instruct Joshua. God must help Joshua to see things in the light of what God sees. God, you know, Joshua must see things in the light of the light of God. So, there was God intent. 
And what was this God intent before Joshua began? Now, when you look into chapter, chapter 1 of the book of Joshua, you see how the conversation begins. It's not even a conversation. It is one-way traffic. The Lord instructing Moses, instructing Joshua. He says here in verse 1, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then you and these people get ready to cross Jordan, Jordan River into the land that I am about to give them to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river to Euphrates, the, all the Hittite country to the great sea to the west. So there was the intent of God. The intent of God was number one, that Joshua rises to the occasion to know that God has anointed him, has given him a divine enablement to become a leader, to become a leader, to take off, uh, to take over after Moses. And number two, that from their own words, he was going to lead the children of Israel to cross River Jordan. And thirdly, he was going to help the children of Israel to be able to settle in the land of Canaan. Canaan. It was a very big responsibility. And therefore, God begins a conversation to speak into the heart, into the mind, into the life of this, of this servant, Joshua. Now, there are three things that I want to bring out of this dis, uh, discussion. That number one, that when the conversation, God brought in the conversation, it was the depth of God's. It was the depth of, the, uh, of God's heart that was calling into the depth of the heart of Joshua. He was telling him something, and he wanted him to hear, not just hearing it, but also hear it, hear it in the spirit, so that he can be able to move and be able to understand the anointing of God that was upon his life. Now, this thing had not occurred into him. You see, the word of God says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10, he says, eye has not seen, ear has not heard. It has never entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared to those who love him. But God has revealed them to us by his spirit. In this conversation, God was revealing his heart. He was speaking. He was speaking into the heart of Joshua. You see, the Bible says, deep calleth unto the deep. God knows his heart. But Joshua had not known his heart. Joshua had not known what was the will and the direction of God. And therefore he begins with a conversation that there is a responsibility that he was giving him. He was going to be a leader. He was going to lead the people to cross over Jordan. He was going to subdivide the country. They were going to fight over 31 kingdoms for before they begin to settle. So he needed to hear from the heart of God. The depth in God was calling into the depth of the heart of this man, Joshua. You see, faith, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And that's why he began a conversation so that Joshua can be able to hear what God wanted him to hear. Number two, God was revealing his intent to Joshua through the language that Joshua could understand. Now, God did not speak to him in other tongues. God had a conversation to take him from the known to the unknown. And if he was going to succeed in the unknown, he needed to be grounded in the known. 
Bible says those who know their God shall be strong. He wanted Joshua to be strong. He wanted Joshua to be encouraged. He wanted Joshua to be a man of courage. He wanted Joshua to rise up to the occasion. Between the children of Israel and Moses, it appeared like there was a very big gap. But you know what, in the speaking, God wanted him to rise up into the occasion. I feel in my spirit to tell you, my friend, my brother and my sister, that God is calling you to rise up into the occasion. God has an intent in your life. And God wants to anoint you to enable you to rise into that occasion. Let me tell you, by your own strength, you cannot do it. I hear of stories, people making big, great resolutions, uh, resolutions at the end of every year. They say, I'm going to stop to quit smoking. I'm going to quit doing this. I'm going to be doing this and that and that. But by the third week, they have broken every vow that they have made because they made it in their own strength. With our own strength, we cannot make it and we require anointing for us to be able to rise into the occasion of the purpose of God for our lives. And therefore, God spoke to Joshua in the language he could understand. May I say also something out of this? God is speaking to you through a language that you can understand. And what does he say? He cares about you. What does he say? By the stripes of Jesus, we were healed. What is he saying? I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. What is he saying? Lord, I am with you always until the end of the earth. Let me tell you, friends, shaking may come in. Tribulations may come in. But that, that does not change the plan and the purpose of God for your life. He still stands the same. He is going to go with you until the end. He is going to speak into your heart to a point whereby you will say, speak together with Paul and say, we glory in tribulation also. Because we know tribulation works patience. And the patience works experience. And experience works hope. And our hope in God is never put to shame. God will never put us to shame. Those who trust God are like Mount Zion. They can never be shaken. They can never be moved. But what makes them not be moved? By hearing the intent of God for their life. Number three, that God, what was God's intent? What was God's intent when he is speaking to this man Joshua. If you read in the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, verse 10, there's something that Paul is speaking concerning God's intent. He says, to the intent that principalities may be made known the manifold wisdom of God. The manifold wisdom of God. What was the manifold wisdom of God when God is speaking to this man, his servant Joshua? Is that through Israel, the nations of the world will be reminded that he made a covenant with his servant Abraham. Even if it took, it had taken over three, nine hundred years Still, the promises of God are yea and amen. That even the manifold wisdom of God, manifold, uh, manifold wisdom of God was, be able, was seeing, was being seen that from this, in this 900 years, still he is able to work out things to ensure that the seed, the seed of salvation of the world through Judah, from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob will still be maintained that at the end of the day, Messiah was going to be born. 
At this particular time, Messiah had not been born, but nevertheless, the manifest, manifest, uh, manifold wisdom of God was being manifested to show that God was in charge. Let me tell you one. God wants to show you that he is in charge. God is the boss. Nevertheless, it doesn't matter how many years. Many times we begin a journey. After 10 years, we give up. But let me tell you, God never gives up, uh, gives up on us. He makes sure that he sorts out that the detail to which he gave his promise, he will make sure that it comes true in our lives. The other thing is, the devil needed to know and see the manifold, manif uh, man manifold wisdom of God in preparing, in carrying on the struggle of making a declaration that he is defeated. Satan had sinned against God by the time God is calling Abraham. Suffering and situations were coming in. People were going through hardships. There were shakings and difficulties in their lives. But the manifold wisdom of God was still being manifested that Satan is defeated. And I want to say to us here, Satan is defeated. You better know he is defeated. We are not here to lift up or to glorify him. We know that he exists. We know that he has power. But his power is limited in comparison to the power of our God. Jesus Christ said, I'll give you power to tread upon scorpion. Nothing will by any means hurt you. Why do we need anointing? We need anointing so that first of all we may hear the intent of God for our lives. What God desires. Before we go out to declare it, we need to experience it in our hearts. And in conclusion, I want to mention again here. We must all the time remember, it is God who anoints. It is the Lord who enables. It is the Lord who gives the anointing. He gives a divine enablement. That's why Moses said, may the Lord give you an increase of a thousand times. And this anointing also comes through impartation. God has to take us in a place someday and have a conversation in our lives and show us that he is in control. It is not the world. It is not the nations. It is not the superpowers. God is in charge. And it's not going to be over until God says it is over. It is only him who has a final word. Allow him to put something in your heart today so that you can be able to rest, can have peace, that can be able to minister the peace of God in your life. The peace of God that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. And finally, anointing is unstoppable. God's anointing is unstoppable. From the time when God spoke to Joshua, 31 kingdoms in the land of Canaan, he fought, he defeated all those kings, he became a leader, he subdivided the land to the children of Israel. God wants to anoint you for a purpose. What is he saying to you? The Bible says, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. There is something that God is saying to you. And whatever he's saying to you, I want to say here, he is going to enable you. He's going to give you a divine enablement to be able to make sure that what he has said will come to pass. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. Let's pray together in the name of the Lord. Father, in the name that is above every name, we come before you. We are so thankful because it is you who anoints we see it in the story of Joshua. We see it in the story of Moses. We see it in the story of other servants of God whom you spoke to in their lifetime and what they were able to achieve. I pray that God will enable this brother and that sister, Heavenly Father, to be able to rise up 
into that anointing of a thousand times. May you enable them in your own way, O Jehovah God, in their different anointing, according to the level where they are, Heavenly Father, to be able to achieve. May they be fulfilled. May they look back and say, God has been our Ebenezer. We thank you and we honor your name. In Jesus' name we do pray. Shall we say amen? Amen. amen. And the Lord bless you indeed. Amen.